Praise God. I need all the children in the front because it's about them. More so so that when they're in the front, they absorb it better because, you know, when I was younger, the school teacher would always want the children that are less attentive to come up front so that they could learn. So that's why I ask the children to come up front because it's about them. And uh, we're going to wait on the rest of the children that are coming because we don't want them to miss anything, you know? Thank you, Jesus. Have your way, sweet Jesus. Come up front, come up front, please. Come up front, sis. <laughs> All the young people, the children, please come to the front. Young people, children, please come to the front. children. Does anyone know what God's commandments are? Any of the children? Any of the children? What God commands us to do? Some of the things, if you know any of them. God commands us to do in my mouth. God commands us to do is um anything. No, no, anything that's on your mind that, that you think that God has commanded us all to do, especially with the children. Put trash inside your garbage. Yeah. <laughs> That's being obedient. <laughs> Amen. Amen. God, God, she said, say that one more time. Hello. Amen. Amen. Okay. Anyone else? I see you have your hand. Love. So God has commanded us to love. So with with loving, loving others, how do we show our love to others? Since he he has commanded us to love. Oh, okay. Um, by forgiving. By forgiving. How else? How else do we show love? By getting used to people. Praise God, by getting used to people. That's how we show love. Go ahead, my dear. Don't hide. You got it. Don't be shy. Praise to God. Yeah. Friend that were enemies. She said to be friend that were enemies. Hey. 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 To love our enemies. Praise to God. Love God. Amen. Bingo. Bingo. To love God. So since it's about the children and empowering the children, um, we're going to teach them some things that God has commanded us all including the children to, to um, follow so that it would be embedded in their heart from as of a young age, so they know God's way at this age. 
so when they grow older, no one can really deceive them on the commandments of God and what God has told his people to do and to follow and how we love God and love people. So I'm going to have them do a lot of reading so that they can have it for themselves. So we're going to turn to Deuteronomy chapter 5, and we're going to read that whole chapter. And Deuteronomy chapter 6, and we're going to read that chapter as well. With a few others that are on the board that are written down that come from the New Testament, but that would also relate to commandments that were in the Old Testament to show the difference between how God says to keep them. All right? So, who, who want to do some reading? Children. You want to do some reading? You want to do some reading? <laughs> she said, you want to do some reading? Praise God. Deuteronomy chapter 5. And I'm going to stop you periodically to, to highlight some things and to ask some questions to the children. But after the children um, answer, then we could have the adults give an insight as well to, to, um, to everything that is said. But basically, what we want to edify the children on what thus say the Lord. Amen. All right? All right, my dear, you can go ahead and read. You, you want to come up, come up from this little more, please. I'll hold it to you, because I'm going to have you stop <coughs> periodically. And Moses called all Israel and said unto them, Hear, O Israel, the, st the statutes and judgments which I speak in your ears this day, that ye may learn them and keep them and keep and do them. The Lord our God made covenant with us in Corinth. The Lord made us not covenant with our fathers, but with us, even us who are all of us here alive this day. The Lord taketh with your faith to faith in the mouth out of the midst of the fire. I stood between between the Lord and you at the at that time to shew you the word of the Lord, for ye be for ye were afraid by reason of the fire and went not up to in the mount, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Praise God. Right. One second. So. Yes, we see that God has brought them from one place to another, from a land of bondage to a land of freedom. You know, so we all in here are free because He has set us free, and He has set free is free indeed. Thou shalt have none other gods before me. So children, there's no other God before the true and living God. Now with that said, what are some other gods? What are some things that people would deem as another God? Money. Money. Excellent. Maybe they were somebody famous. Amen. Yes, yes, ma'am. Anything else? Anything else that people may deem? Hey, As a God. <laughs> huh? She said clothing. Yeah. Amen. Clothing. Amen. So basically, anything that you exalt above the true and living God, it now becomes your God. Go ahead, say. If you look at females too seductive, too seductively, it could be a God. Amen. Uh, Amen. Amen. Men do make sex a God. If they, you know. Nymphomania. Amen. 
Thank you. So we establish that thou shalt have no other gods before the true and living God. And that is a commandment that God has put forth because we serve a, a jealous God. Anything that you would esteem higher than God, that you would bow down and serve, that has become a God unto you. So God has warned us about making these things our gods. Thou shalt not make thee any graven image or likeness of anything that is in heaven, above or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the waters beneath the earth. Amen. Stop right there, please. So yes. what would be some graven images, today's graven images, that people bow down and worship as a God? Children, what would be a graven image? Because you have to... In a young state, you have to realize what is an image, a graven image that people would serve so that you don't do it from, it, it will become a practice, you know, and a lot of people have the little statues and the pictures of angels and it says make no likeness of these things. Don't even bring them to, into your home because it's a, it's a hindrance in the home when you have these little statues of angels, they harbor certain spirits that are not supposed to be in the in the home and it, it ties up certain things and this is what God had taught me way back to watch the things you bring into your home you know and one of the things we have to be very mindful of is about these graven images that we would bring into our homes thou shalt not bow down thyself unto them or nor serve them for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Amen. For the Lord. What does it mean to take the name God's name in vain? Um, you could change his words. Change his words. Oh yeah, like change his words is taking his name in vain. That's right. Anyone else? Anyone else? What does it mean to take the Lord thy like God name in vain? Any of the children? Children first. Children. Yeah. Children. Adults. <laughs> to take lightly his authority, what he says, to make obscure, meaningless, what, what he wants from us. Using his name in reference to a curse is, a, is, a, is one type of his name. But also taking his scriptures and devaluing de them in front of others. Well, you know that's, that's not so. Amen, amen. So it's basically placing the God's name in something that is empty, that is void, of no velocity. That is that's what it basically means to take God's name in vain. So if if there ever arises a situation where it gets you angry and you want to say something, make sure you don't mention his name because it will be attaching his name to something that is vain. So children, be mindful of what you attach God's name to. Whenever you speak, whatever you do, make sure it's attached to something that is holy and true and righteous at that. Continue, my dear. So the Lord will not hold him guilty, lest that taketh his name in vain. Keep the Sabbath day to think. Sanctify it. Sanctify it as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee. Six days thou shalt labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor the thy God. Take your time. You're doing well, sir. You are. Excellent. Excellent. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy master's servant, nor 
thy maid servant, nor thine ox, nor thy ass, nor any of thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates, that thou master servant and Huh? Man servant and thy maid servant may rest as well as though. Amen. Stop right there. <laughs> what is the Sabbath day? Yeah. Children, what what when he says thou shalt keep the Sabbath day of God, the Lord thy God, what is the Sabbath day? What do we know about the Sabbath day being? Any of the children know what the Sabbath day is? It's a day that is consecrated to God. Today could be our Sabbath day because we all are gathered here to fellowship in, 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 the, in the name of our God and as one body. But we're not teaching Sabbath because every day we should keep it holy. Ah, a Monday, keep it holy. Tuesday, keep it holy. Wednesday, keep it holy. Thursday, keep it holy. Friday, keep it holy. Saturday, keep it holy. Sunday, keep it holy. Now, the Sabbath day, we are lords of the Sabbath day. If you turn to John chapter 5, 8 through 17, we're going to read that really fast to explain what they were doing to Jesus and how they kept a day and esteemed it more than another day, which we're not supposed to do. Every day we got to keep it holy. So if you turn to John chapter 5, Verse 8 through 17, basically it speaks of the Sabbath day and how we should treat it. Because the old commandment speaks of something different than what Jesus come to make new and to basically clarify what it is. Minister Khalil, you mind reading that? Yes, sir. Chapter 5, verse 8 through 17. The word of the Lord is a secret treasure. Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. The Jews therefore said unto him, That that was cured. Is it the Sabbath day? Is it lawful for thee to carry thy bed? He answered, And he that made and he that made whole the same said unto me, Take up thy bed and walk. Then asked they him, What man is that which did unto thee take up thy bed, which said unto thee, Take up thy bed and walk? And he that was healed, not who it was, for Jesus had conveyed himself away a multitude being in, a, in that place. Afterward, Jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, Thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest the worst thing come unto thee. The man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus which had made him whole. And therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus and sought to slay him because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. But Jesus answered and said unto, and answered them, My father worketh hitherto. And I work. Amen. 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 Sorry. So we see here that Jesus did a good on the Sabbath day, but it's not it's not about keeping a law. With them it was about keeping a law. I used to go to Seven Day Adventist Church when I used to live with my aunt in Brooklyn and God showed me a lot of things about them. <laughs> you know, them trying to hold a particular day. But every other day is like they're in their own world doing whatever they please. Right. Esteeming this one Saturday 
above every other day and trying to hold to this day, following an Old Testament law. Oh, don't cook, don't clean, don't do all these things, which they still broke at times. Right. You know, so we're not under that bondage of a Sabbath day. No way. There's no bondage. You, children don't esteem esteem one day above another. Keep every day as holy as can be. That's right. And God will continue to bless you. Um, continue on, my dear. Please. And remember that thou waste a servant in the land of Egypt, and that the Lord thy God brought thee out of thence through a mighty hand and by a stretched out arm. Therefore, the Lord thy God commandeth thee to keep the Sabbath day. Honor thy father and thy mother as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee. Honor thy mother and thy father so that thy days may be long upon the earth. What does it mean to honor your parents, children? To listen to them? Amen. To be obedient. Um, to honor your mother and your father is to, um, to listen to what they say. Amen. Amen. Anything else? What does it mean to honor your parents? To say what they tell you to do. Do what they say. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. That being obedient. Anyone else? Anyone else? <coughs> you, you, you have something to say? Go ahead. Uh, I was going to say that honor thy father and our mother is to also not just listen to them, but not to, like, when they tell you certain mistakes, they ain't did not to follow them. Amen. And try your best not to. Amen. 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 Honoring your mother and father. When Jesus came, he raised the bar for us. That bar is now. Whether they can see us actively participating in sin makes no difference. We just honor them by doing it behind their back as well. Praise God. Praise God. Don't listen to your parents. No. Because um, you know what my mommy does? She does bad stuff, so you so you should follow her. So that's why. So, 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 uh, that if, if if I exemplify, if, they, if, if my children hear me curse, I'm talking about myself, not talking about anybody else, right? Uh, when, you, when you guys used to see your daddy get angry and punch holes through the wall, that was not to be duplicated. That was not to be duplicated. Because my anger was not meant to punch holes in walls. Amen. Even though I, was, I had stopped punching people, I still was banging all the walls out. Right? And so... That was a bad example as a, parent. as a parent for them to see, okay, daddy's not punching people no more, but he's punching holes in all the walls. All the walls need a repair because he's punching them all out. That's what I would do when I get angry. If I, if I had an anger that I couldn't control, I would I would bang, I would just take a I would take a bond a hard a hard wall to it, just punch a hole through it. And I would and I would get my anger out through punching that hole in the wall. Now, what that, what that showed them was a bad picture. Because though it wasn't a good picture, it was also a horrible picture as well. Because, okay, you're not fighting people, but you're banging the holes in the wall. You're still not taking your, you're not, you're not taking your anger. I'm talking about myself, to prayer and so on and so forth. So that's not to be duplicated. Praise God. That's Praise not to God. be followed. If they see me took my money, and I go buy a pair of $200 Jordans, 
And I didn't buy somebody in my house what they needed. That's not to be that's not to be duplicated on my behalf. Okay? So those are the type of things that, that she's throwing out that all parents have done. Not one parent, but all parents in this room have exemplified a behavior that they wouldn't want their child to duplicate. And so that's good that she wouldn't. Amen. Amen. I think as parents, we need to be the greatest example so that our kids will be without excuse. Okay? Because they're going to watch and follow what we do. I know I've gotten upset a lot of times in front of Noah. And I'm not going to repeat the different things I said. But she came to me humbly. was like, don't say that. You're not supposed to say that. And I respect that because that allows me to take a higher for myself, my family, and my children. And they'll follow everything we do, whether it's good or bad. So we gotta make sure that we're the greatest example. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, and it's just following truth. With the kids, they're supposed to follow truth. Great. Well, amen. <laughs> Continue on, my dear. As the Lord thy God hath commanded thee that thy days may be prolonged, and that it may go well with thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. So, in obeying our parents, when they show us a good example, God prolongs the days of our lives, and he blesses us because of our obedience to our, to our parents. So, children, listen to what mommy and daddy is telling you to do, and you know it's right. <laughs> it should be exemplifying that which is right to you at all times. And parents, do the right thing in front of your children so that they may have a good example to look after. Thou shalt not kill, neither shalt not commit adultery. It says, Thou shalt not kill. Now, this is even more profound than just this basic, Thou shalt not kill, because we all know what it means to kill. But the word of God goes deeper into what it means to, to kill. If you turn to first John chapter three, chapter three. The first verse. Um, <laughs> first John 3, 14, and 15. I can read that? Praise God, yes you can. And you can read the one under it as well, after you've read that. We know that we have passed from death unto life, because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer, and ye know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. So, just the mere fact that one would deal in hatred with a brother means that you've committed a heinous crime unto God. Amen. If he compares it to one murdering his brother. Amen. He compares hate to being living in death while one is alive upon the earth. So we know not to hate because it says thou shalt kill, but it's more profound than that. Just the act of one hating or having animosity to one's brethren, it means to, to actually want to kill your brother. You know? So if you could catch 1 John chapter 2, 9 through 15. It goes, it also speaks of the same thing in a more in depth form. Verse 15, right? Verse 9. Verse 9, okay, I got it. Verse 9 to 15. 1 John chapter 2, 9 to 15. He that saith he is in the light and hath hateth his brother, he is in darkness even until now. He that loveth his brother abideth in light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whither 
he goeth, because that darkness has abided his eyes, blinded, but blinded his eyes. I mean. Sorry. I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. I write unto you, Father, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you, young men, because ye have overcome to wicked one, the wicked one. I write unto you, little children, because ye have known the Father. I have written unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because ye are strong, and the word of God abideth in you, and ye have overcome the wicked one. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Faith. Thank you, Faith. So we see a clear picture of what it means to love as well. And how abide, how when we love, we abide in God's light and in his truth by loving. And if we hate, we abide in darkness. We, we, we're fellowshipping with darkness if we live in hate. And as it says further, if one hates your brother, is to like one murder your brother. Which brings us back to God's commandment when he says, thou shall not kill. Right. So just the very yeah. thought of hatred means as though like you're killing your brother. So we know how to abide in light and not in darkness at all times. Continue, my dear. Please. Neither shall thou commit adultery. Neither. Now, it, it speaks about committing <laughs> adultery. And um, we know what adultery is. Um, for the children, um, when you get older, and God blesses you with a husband or a wife. To commit adultery is to be unfaithful to your partner that God has given you. To be unfaithful is like to commit adultery. But if we go to Matthew chapter 5, 27 and 28, it goes in depth to what commit adultery really is, what it means to commit adultery. So... If we could turn to that, that would be excellent. I just want to say one thing. Even in that passage, you could, you could keep in that particular passage there too, adultery means fornication as well. Right. Um, there are times that the word is used interchangeable. Right. And in that particular passage, it means fornication as well. So to the children, that means that God is cautioning you guys not to have any sexual relations at all until you get married. Praise God. And that's for everyone that's here. Praise right. God. Amen. Praise God. That's what God is urging us. So right there, that's why it doesn't say fornication. It just puts adultery. It means adultery where a man cheats on his wife, or it means adultery if a man just goes out and he fornicates. It just uses one word. So I just want to point that out. Praise God. You guys heard that? Yes. Praise God. Now, Matthew chapter 5. Verse 27 and verse 28, it says that ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her had commit, committed adultery with her already in his heart. So we know the very act of looking upon a woman and wanting to lust after her are looking upon a man and lusting after that man means that very thing in your heart causes you to already stumble and commit adultery because every thought it, it every action is is based upon a thought for me to just speak i had to think of what i had to say our movements anything we do is based upon a thought and then an action follows that thought so the thought of wanting to lie with 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 someone that you're not married to is as committing adultery already. So this is what Jesus said, and he's warning us of. He gives us a more in-depth um, meaning of what it means to commit adultery in that some people might have viewed it differently in times of old, mere as their mind could create 
all these lustful images and thoughts and imagination, and by them not going through the very act, they have not committed it. But he's saying otherwise, by having these thoughts fester in the very mind, you've already committed adultery within. So it's something that we should be mindful of. Neither shalt thou steal, neither shalt thou bear false witness against thy neighbor. So if it warns us of stealing, any of the children know what stealing means? To take, to take something that's not yours in a sneaky way. Amen. To take something that does not belong to you. Amen. Not to steal anything. Amen. <laughs> Not to um take a bath, not to steal money. Amen. Amen. Not to take something that you don't own or that you don't own. Amen. Amen. So the children basically get it down pat, but it means when the Bible said, Thou shalt not steal. Praise God. Because we know that that is not God like. And if in any instance you're, you're tempted to take something that does not belong to you, always remember that God is looking at your every move. Even if no one is around, God sees. Even if no one is around, he hears. So because of that, we should always be mindful of what we do when others are not present, when no one is looking and it's something that you might want that does not belong to you. You put the thought in mind that God is looking and he's seeing what I'm doing at that moment. All right, children? So that you'll be um, wise in your ways. Neither shalt thou commit a... Neither shalt thou bear false witness against thy neighbor. Amen. What does it mean to bear false witness against your neighbor? Um, that means when... To say somebody got arrested because they was um, selling drugs, but somebody else said that they saw it when they really didn't see nothing that happened. Okay. My sister always asks. Um, my sister always asks. My sister always asks me something when she needs to use me, and she don't steal me. Praise God. To bear false witness means to um say that you saw or um you saw something that you really didn't like. It's like like a little bit like lying. Amen. Yes, sir. Okay, so sometimes, uh, well, sometimes when, when I'm in the line, the teacher, because, you know, I'm usually the one to talk in class, so the teacher thinks that when I'm in line and someone else is talking, she thinks that I'm talking. So she, she accuses you wrongfully of speaking that you did not. You got to pray for that teacher, huh? Yes, we do. Go ahead, Rosie. When I get mistakes, right? Um, I get one hundred. She's so cute, huh? I love you. I love you, bro. Praise God. I love you. Praise God, bro. Um, so yeah, we all have established what it means to um be a false witness. I mean, you were never present, you didn't know what happened. So basically, don't have anyone involve you as children into anything that you did not see or partake in because your friends might want to gang up and tell you, listen here, let's go tell the teacher on this person because they did such and such, but you didn't see the person do the very act. So be mindful of what your friends might come to you with in terms of someone else regarding something that you might not have seen yourself. All right? <laughs> Thank you, you are, my dear. 
Neither shalt thou desire thy neighbor's wife. Neither shalt thou covet covet thy neighbor's house, his field or his manservant or his maidservant, his ox or his ass or anything that is thy neighbor's. Amen. 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 What does it mean? To covet something that does not belong to you. What does the word covet mean? Rosie had her hands up there. She got it for us. Covet means when you cover something up that's not yours. Thank you, Rosie. What does it mean to covet? I think. I think covet is covet being to take something that's not yours and to get your own way. something means to want to bear ownership of something that does not belong to you. Amen. For example, this bag you have. For me to covet this means I want this particular one that you have. I want this one. I don't want one that is similar from the store, but I want this one. It means to want something that does not belong to you. It's okay for you to want something similar to that you could go buy yourself. But to want that, that one that your, your neighbor has, that is what it means to covet. And we should not try to covet anything that does not belong to us. Your friends at school has a nice, um, a nice phone, a nice sneakers or whatever. It's okay for you to want something like that, the same brand, the same look. But to want theirs, the one on their feet, no good. No good. I just want to point out part of coveting too means that sometimes it's not even you could even want what your neighbor has, even if you could buy it. Because if somebody could see you come in right now with a suit on, right? And it'll be a color or something that they never would have gotten. You're the only one with it. They like the attention that you get with it. And even though they have the money to go buy it, and they went and brought it. They still brought it out of a covetous heart because they wanted what you had still. Amen. Even Amen. though they purchased it. Amen. Right? Amen. And that happens in church and out of church. But that's why you got to know that you guys are original. See, there's nobody like the real you if you'll just be the real you. But what happens is peer pressure, and I'm talking to adults as well as children. Peer pressure causes other individuals to not be content with who they are. No. See, you could be the best you or the worst me. But as children, the best thing you could do is not want to be like no one else. Be happy with who you are. Don't want those things. And even if Macy's own it, if you, if it, if you can't get it, you're still coveting. Even though that's Macy's stuff. You could cover it from your television screen. You could want something that's not yours. It could be a car. It could be a house. It could be someone else's uh, a husband or wife. You could cover it from your television screen and want something that is not yours. And at that point, you still have covered it because you desire something that is not yours. And you would want to ascertain it just so that you can have what that person has. So as children, be very mindful that what you have is more than enough. Amen. So many times we pick hairstyles as children because we saw another child with it. So many times children are not even happy with their own parents looking over at someone else's parents that they would never be happy with because that parent could not parent you. Amen. Wasn't designed for you. So, what you have to you have more than enough. Praise God. That, that, was, that was wonderful. 
read one more um, one more scripture at the last line and then I'm going to have the next child come up and read from um, some of Deuteronomy chapter 6 I know time is coming down but after that what I want to do is anoint the children and have the ministers and elders pray over the children if it's necessary that we gather them these words the Lord the Lord spake unto all your assembly and the mount out of the midst of the fire of the cloud and of the thick dark darkness with a great voice and he added no more and he wrote them in two tables of stone and delivered them unto me Amen. Yes. Give her a round of applause. <laughs> Our next reading is going to come from Deuteronomy chapter 6. And we're going to read up the, from 1 to about 9. I'm going to ask you to do the honors to me, please, if you may. Lady Amela. Yeah. Yeah. Deuteronomy 6. Yes. Deuteronomy chapter 6. <laughs> She just read, but God is telling us to teach it on to our children, our sons and sons, so that it might be well with them as well, so that they may be in a, a land that overfloweth with milk and honey, which is which is which is basically a part of God's promise to us. You see, God cares for us, He wants to bless us with the best, but we have to be diligent in listening to Him and following what He says. Which are, which is mean to upkeep his commandments. And um, Jesus came and he said, Greater commandment I give unto you. A new commandment that he loved one another as I love you. And basically, the love that we have for each other will keep us in following God's commandments. Wherein, if I'm in love with my brother and my sister, I'm not going to covet anything they have. I'm not going to um, be hateful to them, which we know the Bible compares that to being a murderer. You know, I'm not going to tell lies to them. I'm not going to try to steal from them. So this is all under the umbrella of love. So if we would dwell in love with one another, it answers and we keep on the God's commandment as long as we keep that love that he has given us. God, it's so smart. 
chapter 5 of Deuteronomy was he was saying do not commit adultery and he was saying do not steal right. yeah. um, things that do not belong to you. Oh, yeah. And out of chapter 6, he was saying And out of chapter 6, he was saying, do the commandments that God teaches you. Amen. Amen. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And children, what have you learned from today's lesson? How have you been empowered? Closing? <coughs> I just want to read one more thing out of Deuteronomy chapter 7 from verse 13 to 15. It says, And he will love thee and bless thee and multiply thee. He will also bless the fruit of thy womb Amen. and the fruit of thy land, thy corn and thy wine, thy oil, the increase of thy kin, and the flocks of thy sheep in the land which he swear unto thy fathers to give thee. Thou shalt be blessed above all people. There shall not be male or female barren among you Amen. or among your cattle. And the Lord will take away from, from thee all sickness and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt, which thou knowest, upon thee, but will lay upon thee all them, but will lay upon them all that hate thee. Praise God. That's it. Praise God. God is good. His mercy endured forever. Children, if we can have the children and the elder. Apostle, minister. Children, we just need you guys to come forward. Come forward there. Hi, Steve. Michael. Michael, come. Ha ha! Come on, Nishar, you're not too big. Come on.
Let your anointing be upon them, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord. Oh, bless them, Heavenly Father. Yes. Let no harm or danger come upon them, Heavenly Father. But hide out your children for your use. Yes. Help you to pastors, apostles, ministers, elders, deacons, Heavenly yes. Father, whatever you have set for them. For their lives, Heavenly yes. Father, let it be done, Heavenly Father. Thank Let your will be done in these children's lives, Heavenly yes. Father. Thank you, Lord. Oh, bless your children, oh, Heavenly Father. For they are yours, Heavenly Father. Teach them of your will and your way, Heavenly Father. Let them grow in love, Heavenly Father, so that every way they may go, Heavenly Father, that your love may go through their vessels, oh, Heavenly Father, so that others may see your light shining through their young vessels, oh, Heavenly Father. And as they grow older, let the love that is within them wax yes. strong, oh, Heavenly yes. Father. Let their light shine, oh, Heavenly Father, continually, yes. oh, Heavenly Father. Yes. Let none of them be in lack, oh, yes. Heavenly Father. Let them not hinder or go in and into any different or wicked paths, oh, Heavenly Father. Yes. But I ask that your will be done in their lives, O oh, Heavenly Father. Have your way with yes. these children, O oh, Heavenly Father. Keep yes. their young vessels you, healthy and strong. Protect them from all sickness and all illness, oh, Heavenly yes. Father. We lift them up before you this very day, O Heavenly Father. Asking you, O oh, Heavenly yes, Father, to anoint them with your holy things, O oh, Heavenly Father. Thank you. Let your spirit. Have his yes, way in their young lives, oh heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord. Continually bless them in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. Excellent, excellent, excellent child empowerment. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. 